Hi everyone, welcome back to Heart Breathings. This is our August notebook challenge and I am so excited to share with you the notebooks that I've been using throughout the last month and new ones that I'm gonna be picking up for the month of August. Can you believe that it is already August and back to school time? It's hard to believe, really hard to believe, but I do wanna share with you some things that I'm gonna be using because it's back to school and how my notebooks have been going. <laughs> You may notice that we are taking a slight break from our series on writing scenes just to focus a little bit on planner stuff and to make sure I get this notebook challenge out to you. This Sunday, I will also have a stationary pal haul for back to school that I can't wait to share with you. And then we'll get back to our scene series probably next week. But let's dive in. Okay, look at this beauty. So this is an Erin Condren 7x9 binder. And these came out a few years ago. And I know at the time they had full planners that go into it and everything. I don't know what all they have available in the binder still, but I have a few of these binders and I have really and truly barely used them at all. Uh, they're a little bit clunky. They also have this sort of unusual configuration of rings that you don't find anywhere else. And their solution to be able to customize it was to kind of put out this small sort of single page hole punch that you could use. And it, you know, it works okay, but it wasn't as easy to flip through and use because of the way the binders like really hard and things like that, but they're absolutely beautiful. And so I wanted to use them and just have never found a use other than the fact that they're beautiful up on my shelves. I have this one that is their old layers design. I have a pink one that's just plain pink. And then I also have one in the mid-century circles design. So I have really wanted to use this and I finally had an idea the other day of like, oh, I need a notebook for, and I'll tell you what it is. And then I thought, oh, this might be the perfect thing to use for it. Cause it's not gonna be something I'm gonna be pulling out all the time, but it'll be something that'll be good for reference. So <laughs> as a little bit of a side note, some of you know that I used to have a Cricut machine. I had a Cricut Air 2 or something like that. And I used the mess out of that machine for sure, but I mostly used it for either cutting out vinyl stickers or like vinyl letters or for making stickers. But if you are a sticker maker, you know that the majority of shops on Etsy that sell printable planner stickers use silhouette files instead of Cricut design files. Not all of them, some of them use Cricut, but I bought a ton on sale of sticker kits and things like that. And most of them were for silhouette. And then I had to go in and take like an hour to like rearrange them and save them a certain way to be able to use them on my Cricut. And it was a bit of a pain and I just don't have that kind of time in my life anymore. And so when we moved, we had to move last year, which really and truly is so funny to look back through my five-year journal that I've shared with you guys before, because it was exactly a year ago that we were finding out that we had a month to before we had no home and we went out on the road. So I ended up donating my cricket to a local group and have not had a sticker cutting machine, which is fine, but I decided to go ahead and pick up a silhouette cameo four in pink. And so I thought what a perfect time to basically create a reference for all the sticker sheets that I've purchased in the past and all the things that I plan to use. I would like to make my own sticker sheets, stuff like that. So this binder, from Erin Condren, I think it's gonna be the perfect solution. So it doesn't have any folders or anything like that. It has these eight rings in their own kind of configuration, but I did buy at some point these classic lined pages and then I have some of the productivity pages. And honestly, I think that I do also have some blank pages in another um, section of my house. So I'm gonna look for those. But basically my plan is to create some dashboards for this and I'll have to just use this funky little one hole punch for it, but I'm going to create a reference sheet for all of my printable stickers, printable dashboards, um, all of those kind of things, whether they're for the silhouette or just printable things that I've done like planner press printables and stuff like that. Because I have bought so many planner printables now from Etsy that I really find myself wasting a lot of time going in, opening each file to see what the design was. And eh, do I want to use this? I don't know. What was this? You know, et cetera. So I'm going to, in conjunction with actually organizing my external hard drive where I keep all of these uh, printables, I'm going to organize that in a better manner to coincide with this. And what I'm planning to do is actually either print out just a screenshot of the kit 
um, on sticker paper, or if I already have a kit printed or something, I can put a little sample of it. And I'm going to create little tabs here, like tabbed dividers that say like horizontal sticker kits or vertical sticker kits or icon stickers. And I'm going to categorize them. And then I'm going to have a little preview of like a thumbnail type thing of what that sticker kit looks like. Like, so I can see if it's a, you know, all mostly pinks or whatever color scheme. And then I'm going to put what sticker shop I got it from, what season it's appropriate for, um, and just any other notes that I might want to keep on it so that when I am looking to print out a sticker kit to use, I can easily just flip through and kind of look through them and then locate the one I want, go to my computer, pick out that file and then print it on my silhouette and cut it uh, while well, you print it on a printer and then cut it on the silhouette. And I think this will save me a lot of time and it'll actually get me using the ones that I've purchased and enjoying them instead of them just sitting on my hard drive. The other thing I want to do, of course, is swatch out all of my washi tape and even maybe my marker collection in here so that this binder kind of becomes a reference binder to all of the crafting materials that I have. Uh, even maybe stamp out my stamps so that I think... You guys know, if you've been around for a while, you know that I'm a very visual person. And when things are out of sight for me, they're often out of mind. And that also includes my stamp collection. Like I know they're there, but because I don't have any way to visually see each stamp that I have, sometimes I forget to use it or, oh yeah, I forgot I had that one. And I know it's a good problem to have, to have too much stuff, but this is like collection of 10 years worth of purchases and, and things like that, more than a decade of these. And I really want to continue to use them and get joy out of them. And that's one of my goals right now is to really use my supplies, get joy out of it and allow it to enhance my life. So I want to swatch out all of my washi tapes according to color. If I can remember what shop they came from, I'll put that here as well as just being able to have like a page all for my Christmas washi or a page just for Halloween washi. And then I can just flip through to decide what I want to use rather than having to like go through. I have like three different areas of my house that has washi tape. So instead of just kind of spending time going through it all, I'll have it all swatched on here. And I know that'll take me some time, but I'm pretty excited to get that going. Maybe even I'll take some of you guys. So this is part of the reason why I haven't used this before is like even just closing it is a pain. Um, and I'm, I'm excited to use it because it's beautiful, but in terms of like ease of use, it opens great, but when you wanna close it, those back sheets get stuck. So I think I need some kind of page lifter in the back, like a little, piece of plastic back there to kind of lift those pages up and it'll be fine. But I'm thinking that I can take my new silhouette and I can create a little gold sticker here that says like reference, craft reference or sticker sheets or, you know, whatever. Um, and I think that'll be kind of fun and I can use that. So that's the first notebook. So if you've been looking, you've got a notebook and you've been looking for ways to use it and you have lots of planner supplies that you spend time digging through, consider creating for yourself sort of like a craft supply reference binder. So to share with you a couple of things I've been using throughout the last couple of months, you guys have seen this. So this is my manifesting journal I've shared with you the last couple of months. And I just wanted to share that I do I have added quite a few in the month of July new pages. So this is kind of where I stopped in June. And so I've added quite a few new pages here in the month of August or the month of July. And so yeah, I mean, this is basically June and July here a little bit. I think I started this. So I started at May 30th. So this is really two months. And it's not something I write in every single day. And um, it's not something that I think about every day. But just when I'm especially when I'm in a really good mood and I'm feeling excited about something or I'm like really in that daydream space of like, oh, I would love to bring this into my life. I would love to like think about how fun this would be, like making lists of what we would do if I had a million dollars and just like putting out, here's what we would buy and here's how much money we would give to a charity and all these other things. Or like I have these things. So it's like journaling as if I 
already had these things. I'm making half a million dollars a year. I'm a bestseller, you know, all of these things. I'm a magnetic person. I will be a millionaire. I would, I'll give my money to charities. I'll do these things, you know, and these things aren't true yet, but maybe someday they will be. And so it's fun to kind of journal about what I would do with that money. And that is one of my manifesting practices. So just to share that I've continued on with that. And I imagine this will take me at least a good six months to go through. And then I've got tons of these Hello Kitty ones that I'm going to continue to fill up. I also just wanted to mention as I move into this, well, I guess I should show you this first. I will link the store down below that has this super cute little charm. I got it in white and in pink. It's like a little pin cup with a flower. And then I also got a little van and a um, here's an example. Here's the other one, a little black and white bow. How cute are these? Like so cute. The, she has them in clips, like paper clips and in charms like this. So I wanted to share that and I can't remember the name of the shop, but I'll share it down below in the links. So I have this traveler's notebook in the B6 size that I've been using for six months for life. This first one I have not used at all. I've been tracking my weight over here and then I haven't used this one. So mostly the way I've been using it just naturally is pulling out this B6 Stalogy. And this I have been using pretty religiously on a daily basis. And it's starting to get a little bit chunky, like not quite what you see from people like Doc Shana, but I am still hoping that I'm going to be able to create a nice chunky notebook here. Um, for the month of July, I did not end up doing a workout tracker, but I did end up keeping up pretty well with my habit tracker. And I have to tell you, this might be the first time in my whole life I have kept up really well with a habit tra tracker. And it's been really helpful to see the things that I'm doing and the things that I'm not doing. And that helps me with my awareness. I've also been not every single day journaling in here, but a lot of the days I'm journaling, I'm also tipping in various like vellums and um, just putting in like what I hope my new routine will be or any other type of journaling or things that I want to do. And I have really been loving this as a journal. I love the way the paper feels. I love adding things into it. It's been a really like creative journal for me. And I put a lot of my like gratitude in here. I've put some of my uh, sort of like vision board stuff in here as we've moved in. And I just set it up for the month of August with a new habit tracker in here as well. And I did add a new workout tracker because I am, I did just buy a treadmill and I'm hoping to keep up with that. I also added in these to-do list sheets that I'm hoping to keep throughout the month. I took some notes on a tarot reading that I had done, but I wanted to also share, I'll pop in a little video of this for Amazon Prime Day. I don't know if any of you shopped the deals on Prime Day. I ended up buying a little photo printer called the Lien photo printer. And it comes with, it's like a little pink printer that's just for four by six photos this size. And it comes with, I think a hundred sheets of photo paper and then its own little toner. And then to refill it, the, the refills come with a hundred sheets and another toner. And the print quality on this is incredible. So a couple of things just to share. So this is obviously just a full four by six photo, but I also was able to go into Canva and perfectly have these little squares and I could put eight to a page and I can cut these out and use them in my memory planner, my Erin Condren planner. And I have, I know I've asked before, but I'm just going to ask again that I'm really getting into filling out my memory planner and I'm making a commitment every Sunday to decorate that and, and fill it out. So I was curious if you guys would like to see that it's more of a personal, like family type stuff, which I don't mind sharing if you guys would like to see the process, but it's also not necessarily related to writing. So <laughs> let me know. I might just put it over on my Sarah Cannon channel, but this here also came from Canva. I set up a vision board in Canva and it's actually more pictures than what you see here. And I put it, set it as my phone wallpaper, but I also printed it out a little bit. And it's funny because as I was writing on this page, it kind of wrote over onto this uh, image as well. But it's really nice sometimes when you're journaling to be able to add little bits of things, washi tape, happy planner stickers, extra photos like I did here, these little pictures and things. Um, 
it's just really nice to personalize it in that way. And so I wanted to, just before we moved on, share with you how I'm tipping these in. If you follow Dakshina, I will link her channel down below. She is the one who I was watching to see how she did this, but I'm going to share it with you too, in case it's something that you're interested in doing. So the first thing that I do is I just use this sort of packing tape. You could really probably use any kind of tape. This one, for whatever reason, did not come with a little razor on it. So I just cut, cut it off and you really only need a little bit. And then you need some kind of little card. I just use these like RFID cards that I have been using to put my washi tape on, but I just have an empty one here. And what I do is I will take this bigger sheet and I'm going to cut it in half and I'm going to set this, this little piece. Let's see. I'll just set it. I'm going to set it on my desk where you can't see it. And then I'm going to take this little piece and I'm going to cut it in half. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go into, I have this little bandeau bag and inside I have something a fan made for me. Um, I appreciate that. And then I also have a ton of vellums and acetates that I have cut out to be about B6 size. To be honest, I'm not always like precise. Like you can see, that's not quite right. A lot of these come from the Planner Society or Simply Gilded. Um, sadly, the Simply Gilded subscription is not coming with vellums and acetate anymore, which makes me sad, but you know, it is what it is. So you cut your page down and you could do this with printed photos. You could do it with anything, but I'm just going to use this piece of vellum and you put it like right in the crack of your planner. And then you take your little piece of tape and you sort of, you see what I did there? I like cut it in half with this card and you really stick it deep down in and then push it to the side and then push it to the side here. And now you've got basically an invisible tape that has hooked that in. And now I'm going to use a second one. I'm going to kind of fold it in half over the side of the card. And then I'm going to pick a part down here and push it into the corner slide that way and that way. And really, as long as you cut the tape small, you can write right up to it. If you cut your tape really big and it goes out this far, you won't be able to write over it. You could put stickers over it, but because that still kind of leaves a little bit of a weird piece there. I'm going to take a bigger piece here, fold it over the edge and on the back of the vellum, I'm going to put it right in the middle and I'm going to really squeeze it into that corner so that it gets in as best as possible. And that's how you tip in vellums and stuff. I really should have put this one a little bit higher because you can see that it kind of pulls there, but I love this. And if you have journal goals, like I do of having a really thick, chunky stalogy, then just put in as many vellums as you want. And you can print them. If you get vellum off of Amazon, you can print your own little designs and stuff. I think I actually did. So I got this little calendar here came from Sterling Inc. If you join her Facebook group, she has free printables for every month with a little calendar on it. And I just have my own vellum paper that I got off Amazon, pretty cheap for a large pack of it. And I just printed it on there. So you can print your own designs onto vellum and tip them in. Or you can, if you have a laser printer, you can make your own like acetates too, like foiled acetates, but I do not have a laser printer, so I can't do that. But anyway, I just kind of wanted to share that Lien printer and I'll pop in a photo of what that looks like and just how this is going. I'm loving using this and it's become part of my sort of like evening chill routine to just journal in here and to put a lot of my just thoughts about how my journey to six months for life is going and how I want my life to be. And it's helping me with mindfulness. And it's also, I feel like reducing my anxiety quite a bit. So just to share, that is one of the notebooks I'm using on a daily basis. Course wise, I still have these two notebooks that I am using quite often, not every single day, but they're just like courses that I signed up for that I'm making my way through. So I've shared this one with you before. I haven't added really anything to it other than the fact that I am consistently going through the class and taking notes. So I have these notes pages and I'm going through and keeping notes as I go through the class. So that has been nice. This is mostly filled with happy planner type stuff. 
um, from cloth and paper and I am loving it. And it's just, you know, I know you guys want to see kind of how the updates are, whether I'm using things or not. So there's not a lot of updates there, but the, I am slowly filling in those pages as I go through that course. And then I also am in another course that um, is like a membership and same thing. I have printed out a couple of things from the digital dash box this month, like this little Paris girl. And I think I have another one back here, but for the most part, it's just been, most of these pages are blank, but it's just been, as I go through the course, I take notes in here. So if you have any little, like this is a B6 Kiki K, it can be so nice if you're taking a course to set up your own special binder for it. Now this class, Manifestation Babe Academy, actually has printables that go along with it. This one has printables, but I've been uh, filling out the printables in my good notes on my iPad and because there's just like 400 pages of them and I didn't want to print them all out because I don't think they'd even fit in here. So this has been more for my thoughts and reflections, but it just makes me happy to have multiple things that I can use my supplies on. And so I have been using those for courses. Speaking of supplies, <laughs> I have recently gone a little bit sticker crazy because I will share with you guys, I had a request to share another A5 binder setup. So that's probably coming soon because I really like my August setup for my A5 binder. Uh, I am using a compact vertical uh, Aaron Condren layout in my binder for my social media planning instead of using the hourly planner like I was using before just to somewhat limit the number of planners that I'm using since I've added a few other things. Here's that pink version of that charm, by the way. I also bought, I couldn't resist, first of all, this wonton in a million cover that was on the Erin Condren site for Asian American Pacific Heritage Month. And I purchased this horizontal layout in the A5 size because I wanted to try out a new to me size. And I ripped out the July pages because I ended up not using this planner at all for July, but I decided that I wanted to use this planner as purely a gratitude planner, what I'm thankful for and just joyful thoughts. And so I went through to a place called Willow Grace Designs, I think it is. I'll link her shop below. And she had a bunch of these horizontal A5 sticker kits. And if you just buy the sheet that has these little washi strips and the boxes, it's only $4 a piece. And so I bought multiples of those. I don't even think I have them sitting here to share with you, but I bought a lot of them. If you guys would like to see a sticker haul of all the new stickers that I've gotten, I've gotten stuff from Procrasta Planner, Coffee Monsters Co., Willow Grace, all My Olive Blue, Boulder Bond. There's tons of new stickers that have come in, um, which is kind of funny because I'm just talking about also getting a silhouette <laughs> to cut my own stickers. But in my defense, I purchased all of these before I bought the silhouette. So uh, if you guys want to see a sticker haul, that might be another fun kind of planner related video. But I just love the way this turned out and I'm excited to have a place. So I have a pretty set morning or evening routine where I write in that B6 six month for life journal. I do any coursework that I want to do or reading that I want to do. And then I draw tarot cards and use my tarot and my five year journal. It all sits by my bed. And I just do all of that from bed every night it takes about 30 minutes. And I have been wanting to establish a better morning routine for myself. So my goal with this particular planner is to set up a better morning routine. And every morning when I get up, um, I've been kind of into cold brew, like making my own sort of cold brew lattes. This one, the ice is melting, but sit down, make my cold brew, you know, hang out with Evie. Usually she's sitting on my lap on the couch, write out just literally, it's like four lines of what I'm grateful for for the day and putting maybe a little mantra or something on here. And I think that'll be a really good way to start my day of like, Oh, I'm so grateful and get into a good feeling space right from the beginning of the day. So pretty exciting. And I love to be able to use this planner. And so if you've been looking for a cool way to do a gratitude journal where you only have a few lines a day, this would also be a good use for a planner you previously bought where the dates don't work anymore. Because what you could easily do is just white out the 2022 or you could put stickers over the top of it. And then you could redate this with some easy date doc stickers, just put a one, two, three on here, just a little round sticker. And you would never know that the dates were off 
And especially if you buy sticker kits or anything like that, you could easily cover it and you would never know. And it would be a great way to repurpose an older planner that you just didn't quite use the way you hoped you would. So I know we're getting long, but I just, I'm just going to share a lot today. This notebook is my current editorial calendar for my Sarah Cannon side, my writing side of the career. And I have it currently sort of Franken planned for just six months worth of content. And in on the monthly pages, I'll be putting, you know, anything that I'm doing, like when I start planning my preptober or uh, my spooktacular this October, all those notes and stuff will go in here. I also keep notes on like interviews or emails or things that I'm going to send in here. Then in the back section where it's just notes pages, I take notes about different things that I want to do or what my plans are and things like that. But I also have been currently working on a big project called Project Phoenix, where I'm doing complete audit on my whole backlist, reformatting, re-uploading, changing sales pages, adding Amazon A plus content or you know, new links to different things. And I'm going to be getting kind of in preparation for my next book to come out. And I, we have this whole spread set up in Notion, but we're going to also be, I, I need it on paper too. So I just wanted to show you as it starts to get kind of filled out what I'm doing. So basically what I do in order to get these little thumbnails or whatever, these small, tiny little book covers is I use the, I do this on my Mac and I just put all of my book covers into a folder on my photos in my Mac. And then I print them as a contact sheet. So when you go into photos and you say to print, you can say to print it as a contact sheet. I'm not sure how you would do this on a PC, but I can kind of test it. And then I print it on sticker paper and then I cut all of these out and it gives you these little tiny book covers that you can put in. And I love to do this. I also will sometimes do it and laminate them instead of doing it on sticker paper so that I have these little cards that I can use to put in my planners or whatever. And I just think they're super fun to kind of have out. I can put them up on my bulletin board, you know, that kind of thing. But I have a checklist here of the book needs to be formatted. I need to fix and upload it to Amazon, to Apple, to BNN and all these other places. And I have so far all of my book covers and all my books put in here. I need to just finish filling out the little like format, whatever. I should probably make a sticker for that instead of handwriting it. But um, I love doing this kind of thing in a notebook because later too, I'll be able to look back on it and remember this project. So it kind of becomes a memory keeping thing too. But if you have any kind of big projects with your books too, I thought you guys might want to like to see this little printable book covers on sticker paper and you can stick them into your plotting planner or your plan regular planner and share how many words you've written. It's lots of ideas of how you can use that. So another Amazon Prime Day purchase <laughs> are these two sort of notebook holders. I don't really know what else to call them. They probably have an official name, but they have little plastic zippers. They do have a pouch here and I got it in the size for like an A5 and I got it in the size for like a B5 planner. And you could use this really, if you were bullet journaling, this would be an awesome thing. It has a little handle to it and you open it up and it's got a pocket in the back here, a pocket in the front that has mesh. And then it has these mesh little, ooh, that really knocked my camera, but it has these little mesh bags that you can pull out if you want to put different supplies in them. I haven't obviously completely set this up yet, but I have some little pins in here. I have some sort of scrapbooking ephemera de deco paper in here. And then in the back, you can slide your notebook in and there's another little pocket here. And this is, as you've seen, I think for months now, this is my story journal that I'm dying to set up and I just haven't done it. So I'm making a commitment in August to get it done. And I thought that one thing that might help me is similar to what I was talking about having all these supplies that I'm not really aware of everything that I have. I was thinking these might help me because I can put just the supplies that I want to use in this particular notebook, like whatever stickers I'm going to use, whatever washi tape I'm going to use, just put it all in here so that when I'm ready to work on this, I can just grab this and go. And similarly to that, I have this larger one. I don't even know if that's going to show up in the frame fully, 
but I have this larger one that's gray and it's the same sort of thing. You just, all the pockets are just bigger. So I have my acrylograph pens, my Posca paint pens. I have a little glue stick kind of thing, glue roller. And then I have another Archer and Olive B5 journal in here. And this is my Neapolitan one that I've had legitimately. I think I've had this for a little over a year with the hopes of making this kind of like a reference for some of my like book of shadows, like witchy kind of stuff. And I just have never had or taken the time to work on it. And I feel like now that the house is a little bit more settled, my weekends are starting to become a little bit more available. And so I'm going to make some commitment. So I want to put all my little supplies in here for that. I also am using this accordion pouch for some of the pens and supplies that I want to use. But I was actually thinking the other day that it might be helpful if you've been around for a little while, I don't know how well this is going to show up. Let me see if I can change the dimensions here. No, I can't. Um, I don't know if you've been around for a while, but I have had this diaper caddy for a bit and it is empty for now. I was using this for a bunch of planner supplies in the past, but it's empty. And this might be perfect to be able to slide these different notebooks into that diaper caddy just uh, right side up or to put them just underneath it and have a specific station in my house where it's like, this is where I work on these like art journals and things that I want to do and have the supplies that I'm gonna use in that caddy and in here so that it's kind of more self-contained instead of having to go through all my drawers to find the stuff. So I'm excited to try it out. I got these on deal for Amazon Prime Day and I will link them down below if you're interested in taking a look. I'm also going to be finally getting started on this notebook that was sent to me by one of you that I super love and appreciate to start keeping notes on the craft books that I'm reading but I just haven't had the free time with Publish and Thrive and everything else going on. So now I'm going to start with Gail Carriger's The Heroine's Journey. So hopefully I'll have some updates on that next week or next month. And then I've been using this notebook, which is a three subject notebook, pretty religiously for my meetings with Renee. Um, I'm taking a course called Sell Through Story also. And then I have meetings each week. Um, with some people in Accelerate. And so I use that for the three subject notebook and I've been enjoying the A5 size. So those are all of my notebooks, a little bit longer of a video today, but those are all of my notebooks. So let's talk about what notebook I'm giving away and what our diverse read is for the month. Okay, actually, before we get into the giveaway and stuff. I forgot, totally forgot that I was going to show you guys what I'm doing for back to school. So this family organizer book is a brand new product from Erin Condren. And they sent this to me a while back, but they uh, had some supply chain issues. And now it is finally available over on their site. I have this pretty watercolor cover for it, but this thing is so cool and I cannot wait to set it up. So it has, I think they come in multiple different designs. This is the, um, neutral design for this year. And it has the monthly overview. And then it also has a spot for your recurring schedule. So if you have soccer practice every Monday, you've got a, you know, um, therapy every Wednesday, you know, whatever it is that your kids activities are each day, you can put that in. And of course you could use this for more than just family, your family stuff, but then you've got lots of other places to put any kind of like memories or photos or any other notes about things that are due for school. There's also a little checklist here, any family goals that you have habit tracking. And I am planning to use this habit and task tracking for my son's allowance. Part of it is that he has to do some of these tasks. So I'm going to be tracking some of that for him, um, as well as my own habits of things like cutting the kids nails, like <laughs> getting haircuts, like those kinds of things. Then you've got a whole section here for things that you might need for school, any kind of dates to remember memories or milestones. If you want to add those in, you've got a place to put your extracurricular activities, more milestones or achievements, more memories for the month. And then you just have blank pages and you guys know how much I love having a planner notebook hybrid. And that's what this is, but it's specifically designed for school age kids and family stuff. The days are long, but the years are short. It's so true. Y'all Evie is going to be three years old next month. And I just cannot even 
favorites this month, funniest things they said, best memory from this month and a special moment I'll remember forever. More memories and milestones, another blank page, and then you go into the next month. And I did not use this in July because our school is starting back in August. And so I'm going to start using this. Andrew's currently in swim lessons and things like that. So you basically have that all the way through to the end of the year. And then in the back of the planner, you just have some stickers to be able to use. And I think this comes in the Harmony Colorful as well as the Neutral. And I'm not sure if it comes in the color blends or not, but you can definitely check their website to see if you can grab it there. But I will link this new Family Organizer book down below because this is going to be perfect for keeping track of all the extracurricular things and things that we're doing at home as school starts back. So notebook giveaways, we have two for you to choose from. I have this Studio O book that says Good Juju, and I thought the Good Juju would be so perfect for if you wanted to start your own gratitude journal, something you can put your good thoughts into, your good energy into, but of course you can use it for anything. This is a nice long, like big journal. It has probably a couple hundred pages in it, and it's pretty, I mean, it's not narrow ruled, but it's not super wide ruled either, and I really enjoy their paper. It does have silver edging on it and a silver page in the front and back and it's a soft bound notebook and then the other choice for the winner would be this a4 size notebook from kiki k i love this one because it has the cherries and this also would be a really great one if you're keeping track of anything back to school for your kids um, or if you're a student and you're going back to school and you want to take some good notes so this has place for subject and date at the top. And this is from the collaboration with the Malala Fund. And so all the proceeds went to a really good cause. This paper is a little bit thinner, so probably is going to ghost a little bit. And it's just those pages over and over. And it is a little bit floppy, it has a spiral bound um, thing to it. And just the design is so cute. Actually, the planner, the A5 binder that I'm using for this month is this same design, but it's white with rose gold um, little designs on it. And so the winner will get to choose that. All you have to do is subscribe, like this video and comment below. If you are new here, our notebook challenge is really about just using your stash of notebooks and not letting them sit there. So, um, this will, if you, if you, whether you have a large stash of notebooks or you're just starting to create your stash, we give away a book every single month. We also have a diverse read every single month. And I wanted to mention that this, oh, I forgot to take the tag off of it. I ended up getting this at Target, um, the I Kiss Char Wheeler book. And this book was incredible. I loved it, loved it, loved it. And now I feel like I want to read everything Casey McQuiston has ever written. So highly recommend this was our read for last month. The read for August that I am recommending and going to try out myself is one that I got through the Owl Crate box, which is a YA subscription. I guess I'm doing two YA books in a row. I apologize if YA is not your thing, but feel free to add some diverse ideas down below. This Ballad and Dagger Outlaw Saints novel from Daniel Jose Older. And let me show you this so cool map. I have a dream. Someday I'm going to have a map in the front of my books, but let's just read what this is about. Almost 16 years ago, Mateo Matisse's island homeland disappeared into the sea. Weary and hopeless, the survivors of San Madrigal escaped to New York, while the rest of the tight-knit Brooklyn diaspora community dreams of someday finding a way back home. Mateo, now a high school junior and piano prodigy, living with his two aunts, one who's alive, the other not so much. That's also another part of it that really intrigues me. Is focused on one thing, getting the attention of locally grown music legend Gerval. Matteo finally gets his chance on the night of the Grand Fete, an, uh, an annual party celebrating the blended culture of pirates, Senteros and Sef Sepharadim. I'm wondering if Sepharadim is a type of angel. I need to look this up or see if it's something he created. That created San Madrigal all those centuries ago, but the evil that sank their island has finally caught up with them. And on the night of the celebration, Matteo's life is forever changed when he witnesses a brutal murder committed by a person he thought he knew. Suddenly, Matteo is thrust into an ancient battle that spans years and seas. As deadly secrets unravel, Matteo awakens a power within himself, a power that not only links him to the killer, but could also hold the key to unlocking the 
dark mystery behind their lost homeland. Everything about this blurb intrigues me from the potential ghost to the fact that the city just disappeared to the fact, of course, I write this kind of stuff. And so this is exactly the types of tropes that I love, like teenager discovers a power within themselves. Um, I love it. In this particular edition, I don't know if this is an Owl Crate exclusive thing, but there are these pretty sort of separated into parts sort of pages, which I really like. And I just love this map on the hardcover. And on the inside, I think this is something that's just for Owl Crate, for example. I don't know if you can still get these. There's an alternate cover art there. So I will link Daniel's website and where you can find out more about him down below. And I will also link this book for you because I bet it's going to be amazing. Okay, that is it for our quite long <laughs> August notebook challenge. I hope that if you have a stash of notebooks in your house, you feel inspired on how to use them to help you get organized. Um, instead of like for me, what I tend to do is instead of saying, oh, I got this new notebook, how can I use it? Which is still a valid question. I also like to look around in my life with the cameo and different things like that and say, what could help me save time? What would be something that would help me doc? Like I want to document in my life. And then once you've decided what you would like to do with a notebook, you can go to your potentially large stash of notebooks and find the one that feels just right for this. But I, my particular challenge to you this month is if you have a notebook like the binder or something like that, that you've had on your shelf literally for years and just have never used pick it out, see if there's something that you could really use it for that you would enjoy that would bring life to you right now, that would bring you joy right now and just start using it. Don't be afraid to mess it up. Don't be afraid that you're not gonna use it for the right thing and just get using those notebooks. All right, you guys, thank you so much for being here. Please subscribe, like this video and enter comment, you know, comment below to enter the this month's notebook giveaway. I will see you guys on Sunday for a stationary pal haul. That's going to be super fun. And just let me know in the comments if you would like to see any of those other things that I mentioned. And we will be back soon with the last two videos of our scenes series. And I will see you then. All right. Bye. Mm -hmm.